I'm feeling sporty, I'm feeling fast, I'm feeling stylish, I'm feeling like a Mercedes A250, which is the car I'm driving this week. It's a small hatchback, which isn't actually that small, and it's in competition with cars like the Audi A3 and the BMW 1 Series. I'm in the Mercedes A250 4Matic, which is in the middle of the range, and I thought it was gonna be one of those weeks where I'd have to squash everyone in the car, but not so. Here's how it did over a week of driving with my family of four. So, space. It's actually pretty good for a family in here. I drove a few friends home on Friday night after we'd been out and they were like, oh wow, this is a car we'd get if we didn't have a family. But I had to stop them and defend the car because this does fit my family. There's a good amount of leg and headspace in the front for both me and my tall husband. I didn't feel compacted like I can in some small cars. In the back, my kids had plenty of room and I also had loads of room. I'm 161 centimetres. But even when I drove my friends home, my taller 175 centimetre friends had lots of room in the back. You'll also be able to get a third child seat in the middle. It won't be the most comfortable bending down to do seat belts up every day because it will be a tight fit, but it will fit and rear passengers will get two cup holders. You get a pocket on the back of the front seats, but there are no air vents in the back. It's something my kids always notice. The car does cool down because you've got three huge air vents pointing straight at the back. And the car looks great. In this color, it reminds me of liquid mercury. You know, silver and fluid with curves in all the right places. It's sporty looking and the hatch is just the right length because sometimes they can be a little bit too short or a little bit too long. This is just right. Inside feels very premium. It starts with this extra wide, extra sharp, extra high def screen, which immediately zooms you into the future in case you didn't know we were there yet. Then it goes down to these incredibly designed air vents, which actually look like rims. They're very cool and also very effective. And then you have this clean, minimal design down here so that everything balances out. And you should see it at night. It's all lit up in customizable colors. It looks really cool. The leather steering wheel feels good. The leather seats feel good and they're so comfortable. Plus you actually adjust them with this really cool seat shaped tool right here. Almost everything is power operated, including the sunroof. In the front, you'll get two cup holders, plus a chargeable spot for your phone, if your phone is compatible, and a swish center storage unit. The technology is also great. You can either stay with Mercedes' own multimedia system, which actually works fine, and it has its own sat-nav, it even has its own version of Siri, or you can use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which comes standard with the car. It also has this artificial intelligence that learns about you as you drive and adjusts settings to suit you personally. For example, when I first got in the car, I couldn't figure out why the radio kept going back to triple M when I had set it to triple J, but it was because the driver before me was a triple M fan and the car had learned to adjust to them. It only took two goes though for the car to readjust back and put it on triple J all the time for me. <laughs> The boot is a good size for this car. Space has been upped by 30 litres from last year's model to 370 litres, which means you can fit a pram in there, but there's also space around it so you can put groceries or school bags on top. It's a similar size to others in this category like the A3 and the 1 Series. Strangely, you don't get a spare tyre in the A250, just an inflator and repair kit, so you won't be driving this on any long distance trips then. And it's quick, not to 100 in 6.2 seconds means you'll beat most cars at the traffic lights, which is always nice to know. Plus it's just so smooth to drive, goes over bumps nice and easily and the steering is lovely. It's just a really great driving experience. 
It's got a two litre petrol engine and this A250 4Matic is also an all wheel drive so I'd be comfortable taking it on gravel roads or dirt roads. I drove it in torrential rain this week and there was no issue with traction on the road. The gears on the steering wheel make it super easy to change. If you're doing a three point turn or reversing, you don't actually have to take your hands off the wheel. There's also a really clear high def reverse parking camera. It's all in color. There's a 360 degree camera as well. So you can actually see where your car is in comparison to things around you. It's really hard to scrape this car while you're parking if you're concentrating. <laughs> Safety wise, it's pretty great because it's got nine airbags. So there's the usual front and side airbags for front passengers, but then it also has side airbags for rear passengers, which is unusual even for SUVs, which are purpose built for families because they usually only have side curtain airbags that are only on the windows. There's also loads of advanced safety equipment like auto emergency braking and active lane keep assist. I really enjoyed driving the Mercedes A250 this week. It's as smooth as silk while driving, looks amazing on the inside and out. Plus it fit all of us. Actually, it made me reconsider buying a hatch for a family because not only did it fit us, but it was really easy to park and had all the latest in safety and technology. I gave it a family rating of eight out of 10. My children also gave it an eight. They loved the way the dash lit up at night.